Because Adam and Eve chose the subjective truth of men, they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. So even though man is incapable of guiding his own path, Jeremiah 10, 23, we have been under the subjective truth of our leaders now for 6,000 years total in the history of mankind. From 70 AD to 340 AD, there was one Bible. It was the completed word of God without any private interpretation or faith systems of men. It was the powerful source of salvation and freedom for humanity from subjective truth of men or every wind of the doctrine of men. John 8, verse 32. In 340 AD, the perfect law of liberty was replaced by the Catholic Bible with apocryphal books and doctrine of men in it. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10. And mankind was once again enslaved under subjective truth or the doctrine of men. The hierarchy of the Catholic Church, not concerned about salvation or freedom, stole away freedom from humanity because they wanted to be sanctified and glorified. Leviticus 10, 3. The apocryphal books of men in the Catholic Bible teach the false doctrine that Satan was Lucifer, the fallen angel. This false doctrine, this strong delusion was allowed by God. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 11, strong delusion. It was necessary for denominationalism to exist because it hid the fact away that subjective truth of men is the cause of human suffering. Truth from God brings love, blessings, protection, while the subjective truth of men is the cause of human suffering. Genesis 2, 17. For the righteous, denominational Bibles were the school of hard knocks, teaching us patience for the time when the strong delusion would be removed. And we would once again realize we need a perfect preacher, a perfect Bible, and that we need to start praying for the Lord's kingdom to come and for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Salvation soon will once again be brought down from heaven. The salvation and freedom of righteous men through the last 1,680 years will only be realized at the second age of the kingdom of heaven. The apostasy of modern man, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, Acts 17, 30, was foreshadowed by the Babylon apostasy, where once the children of Israel were freed they built the second temple in 530 BC. Denominational apostasy will end at the same place where it started in Babylon, Rome. So foreshadows the prophecies of the Holy Spirit, the Heavenly Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 17 and chapter 18. What's so wrong with the subjective truth and men ruling over us with it? Well, the doctrine that children inherit the sins of their parents and then need to be under the control of enemies of Christ is a religious license to murder. Consider the Christian crusades of the Catholics and the Protestants, who in the late 1500s and early 1600s murdered hundreds of thousands of Anabaptists. That's who they named Anabaptists because they were a threat to their own Bibles and religions that authorized slavery and human trafficking of babies. Now, the book of Revelation is about the two ages of the kingdom of heaven. It's been sealed up, hidden away for 1,680 years so that evil men could stand up against God. We've updated the videos on Revelation in our website at therodofiron.org. That's all one word, therodofiron.org. If you look under those videos, don't look under the audios. They haven't been updated yet. But look under the videos. And if it's time for you, if it's time for the strong delusion to be removed from you, if it's time for you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 13, verse 11, well, then you'll be able to understand these matters about the second age and the kingdom of heaven. Acts chapter 1. In Revelation chapter 8 through chapter 12, 
The Lord gives us a general order, order or study, a reversed outline of the New Testament. In the first part of the outline, we see that Domitian's Rome was losing against the kingdom of God in 96 AD. Second part of the outline, we go to an earlier time, and there we see Christian spiritual warfare between the sword of the spirit, objective truth from God, and denominationalism of the Gnostic Jews, both dead and alive Jews. The demons were spirits of dead evil men that were fighting against Christianity in the first century. So that would be the first 10 years of the church, Acts chapter 1 through chapter 12, verse 23. Now these 12 chapters, these 12 chapters in 10 years represent the shortest section of Christ's outline of the Bible, not time-wise, but chapter-wise. And it divides the New Testament up into 28 sections rather than the 27 of New Testament Bibles from men. Acts chapter 1. The gift of the Holy Spirit or the gift of the Holy Bible from God is salvation. Salvation was given up by denominationalists in 340 AD, 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 10. However, the Lord overlooks the sins of ignorance for the righteous destined to live during that age. Also, also, he overlooks the sin of ignorance for those who are called before the foundation of the world to be Christians, or he will count us righteous in time. Consider the Saul to Paul conversion. Also, Revelation 22, 11, Ezekiel 3, and Ezekiel 33, and Ezekiel 39, 25 through 29, where God says, he will not always hide his face from men, or that men will not always preach, stand between God and men. The former words I made. O Theophilus. Now the Holy Spirit was using Luke's tongues and memories and his thoughts to speak to Theophilus, friend of God. The book of Luke really precedes this book of Acts of the Holy Spirit in the first century. O Theophilus, concerning all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was received up after that he'd given commandment through the Holy Spirit unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also showed himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing unto them by the space of 40 days, and speaking the other things concerning the kingdom of God, and about how he would exert his authority both in heaven and earth, beginning in 70 AD in the first stage of the kingdom of heaven. But before that happened, the Holy Spirit would come down to this earth, Jesus was crucified in about 30 AD, and so for 40 years, the Holy Spirit would give to man the Bible gradually. And being assembled with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard from me, for John did immerse with water, but you, that is the apostles, shall be immersed, the Greek word is baptizo, with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And again, the Holy Spirit would deliver the Bible, complete delivering the Bible uh, to the saints in about 40 year period of time. And they, therefore, when they were come together, asked him, saying, Lord, do you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, that would happen in about 40 years. But notice these men had to be ignorant of these matters. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons. You see, times of ignorance were necessary. And for righteous men, we need to understand 40 years in time. It has to be gradually, because if all men were to understand right now that the second age of the kingdom of heaven is coming in 40 years, if all men understood that, there would be no Christian warfare. There would no, be no one that would stand up against God if, if everyone knew and understood that in 40 years, the second age of the kingdom of heaven is coming. So we need to always remember that we're all as clay in the master's hands, and the Lord gives us information when he needs for us to have it. So it's not for us to know the times or seasons which the Father set within his own authority. He'll give it to us when we need it or when it's time for us to have it. And that's going to be different for all of us. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking... He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Pretty dramatic day, wasn't it? And while they were looking steadfastly into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. This is going to be the Father and the Holy Spirit, who also said, you men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? 
why it's important for us to understand that angelic beings were not involved in Christian warfare. Well, that's what we learned. That Satan was the man of sin. That spiritual warfare is between God and man. And so the Father and the Holy Spirit were standing there, not angelic beings. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was received up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you beheld him going into heaven. Then returned they into Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, meaning Olive's Orchard, which is nigh to Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey, it's about a, about a mile. And when they were coming in, they went up to the upper chamber where they were abiding both Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all with one accord continue steadfastly in prayer with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brethren. And in these days, Peter stood up in the midst of the brethren, and he said, and there was a multitude of persons gathered together, about 120. Peter said, brethren, it was needful that the scripture should be fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost spoke before by the mouth of David. Psalms 41, verse 9. Now notice the language here, and this is what we're going to try to do in the scripture given to us by God. The Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David. Okay, David's thoughts and opinions were a part of it, but God, the Holy Spirit, spoke through David. Concerning Judas, who was guide to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered among us and received his portion in this ministry. Now this man obtained a field with the reward of his iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the dwellers in Jerusalem, insomuch that in their language that field is called Akodama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let this habitation be made desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his office let another take. Of the men, therefore, that have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and went out among us, beginning from the merchant of John, unto this day that he was received up from us, of these must one become a witness with us of his resurrection. So the Holy Spirit, speaking through Peter, says this. And they put forth to Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also surnamed Justus, and Matthias, and they prayed and said, You, Lord, who knows the hearts of all men, show of these two the one whom you have chosen to take place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas fell away, that he might go to his own place. And they gave lots for them. I assume that this means they voted for him. They, they were asking God to give them the wisdom to discern which would be the one that would fill Judas's place. And the lot fell upon Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was now come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound as of the rushing of a mighty wind and filled the entire house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them tongues parting asunder like as a fire. And it sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they were promised abilities to counteract the abilities of demons. And now they were in a room and it was filled up with the Holy Spirit. They were immersed with the Holy Spirit. And now they had powers to speak in different languages. Realize this is the Holy Spirit. This is the real thing we're reading about here. Denominational Bibles were not authorized by God. They were not Bibles from God because they contain doctrine of men. There are many men, modern men, who claim to have powers to speak in different tongues to prove that the Bible they are using is from God. But the Bible they are using is not from God. God gave us a strong delusion to think that it was, but it's not. Now there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound was heard, the multitude came together 
and were confounded because that every man heard them speaking in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying, Behold, are not all these that speak Galileans? And how hear us every man in our own language wherein we were born? Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia in Pergia and Pamphylia in Egypt and the parts of Libya about Cyrene and sojourners from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them speaking in our languages, the mighty works of God. And they were all amazed and were perplexed, saying one to another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and spoke forth unto them, saying, Again, the Holy Spirit's going to be speaking through him. You men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and give ear to my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, seeing it as but the third hour of the day. But this is that which has been spoken through the prophet Joel. Joel prophesied it. Now the Holy Spirit's telling them that this prophecy is about now. And it shall be that in the last days, says God, these are the last days associated with the thousand years. It's going to be about 40 years period of time before each age of the kingdom. So we're talking about maybe 1,100 years and all. In the last days divided by 1,680 years of apostasy, I will pour forth of my spirit upon all flesh. Now we're not going to have miraculous gifts. We're not going to need them. But we are going to have the Bible from God that has been hidden for 1,680 years. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. We will understand the prophecy as we teach it in the Bible. And your young men shall see visions. We will understand the visions and the parables in the Bible. And your old men shall dream dreams. You know, in Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, they were mixing the wisdom of God with the wisdom of men, Job's friends. And they were in trouble. And remember, Elihu was the third man in that scene. And he talked about in dreams, God giving to men truth. I think it's probably that God opens up our minds where we can put these things together. Remember, we are as clay in the hands of the master. And so whether it's dreams or whether it's just contemplating God's word, God will allow us to find the answers. If we pr study we pray for them, James 1, verse 5. In these latter days, God will grant them to us. Yes, and on my servants and on my handmaidens in those days will I pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. No, we won't prophesy, but it'll be in effect the same thing as we teach prophecies from God and what they're about. I will show wonders in the heavens above. It's in the spiritual realm. We are in the dark ages, in the matrix of the dark ages, in Gnosticism. And it had to be that way, a part of the scheme of redemption, so that Christianity could be rebooted in the near future. So we've been in the spiritual dark ages, in the matrix, and under every wind of doctrine of men. But we're going to see wonders in heaven above, in spiritual places. We're going to see through every wind of doctrine of men what it is. And signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the day of the Lord come, the great and notable day. The world is going to be turned back right side up when we come out of Gnosticism, when we come out of the matrix. But all evil men that have been using this ignorance for their advantage well, their world's going to be turned upside down. This is a description of the day of the Lord, the thousand year reign of Christ on this earth. And it shall be that whoever shall call on the name of the authority of the Lord, this will be the 40 years before the kingdom. This will be in the first century. Remember the day of Pentecost. Now there are going to be people that are added to the church. And so for 40 years, and that's what much of the book of Acts is about, isn't it? The salvation of men. Men are going to be saved. Whoever shall call on the name or the authority 
of the Lord will be saved. Salvation is only from the Bible, from God. We haven't had salvation available for 1,680 years now. Always remember that the Lord is long-suffering, not willing for any to perish. So no, just because we have not had the Bible of salvation for 1,680 years does not mean that God does not make provisions for your salvation. Fact of the matter is, you will experience salvation when the second age of the kingdom of heaven comes. You're counted as righteous. And a lot more people are going to be counted righteous than what we could have imagined. Now, remember this as well. Some of us are too old to make it into the second age of the kingdom of heaven. 40 years. We won't make it. And so we won't realize our salvation either or realize our freedom from every wind of doctrine of men, including denominationalism. We won't realize that until the second age of the kingdom of heaven. Those righteous dead have gone on, even the denominational righteous dead. They're going to realize their salvation in the kingdom of heaven. But we haven't had salvation on this earth for 1,680 years. Nor have we had truth that will set us free from every wind of doctrine of men in as many years. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God unto you by mighty works and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, even as you yourselves know him, being delivered up by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you by the hand of lawless men did crucify and slay. Denominationalism was the authority behind the crucifixion of Christ. The doctrine of men. Men's doctrine, they decided that Elohim was singular. And so Jesus could not have been God because there's only one God, the Father. So they crucified him because of denominationalism, because of their authority. They chose the authority of men to give to the world the Bible over the authority of God. Who God raised up, having loosed the pangs of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Gates of Hades couldn't hold Christ. For David said concerning him, Psalm 16, 8, I beheld the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Christ was set down on the right hand of God 40 years before he would begin his reign on this earth in 70 AD, Ephesians 2, verses 6 and 7. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh also shall dwell in hope because you will not leave my spirit in Hades, neither will you give your Holy One to see corruption. David wouldn't be left in Hades. He came up first resurrection. So he experienced the first stage of the kingdom of heaven. But neither would Christ, the Holy One, see corruption. Christ's body would be in the grave for only portions of three days. Text continues. You made known unto me the ways of life. The father raised up Christ from the dead. David was made aware of that. Text continues. You shall make me full of gladness with your presence. The Holy Spirit through David prophesied and foreshadowed the fact that Christ would rule over heaven and earth in the kingdom of heaven. Consider Psalms 23. Text continues. Brethren, I may say unto you freely of the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us unto this day. Being therefore an inspired one, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loin he would set one upon his throne, seeing this beforehand, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. You see, man is created in the image of God, body, soul, and spirit. When Jesus was crucified, his spirit went to paradise in Hades, and his body was in the grave. This Jesus did God raise up, of which we all are witnesses, being therefore by the right hand of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured forth this which you see and hear. For David ascended not into the heavens, Christ did. But he said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, set you on my right hand. Consider Ephesians 1.20. 
in Psalms 110 verse 1. Till I make your enemies the footstools of your feet. Who were the first century enemies? Denominational Jews, the Gnostic Jews. Also the Caesar Nero's Rome and Caesar Domitian's Rome. But who are the enemies now? Well, there's a lot of people that are enemies of Christ that are crucifying Christ to flesh. But the last enemy, the great battle of Armageddon is going to be against the Vatican, probably Rome. Babylon, Rome, as we read about in Revelation 17 and 18. And that'll be in about 40 years. Let all the house of Israel therefore know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus who you crucify. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do? That's a good question, isn't it? When we realize the only faith system from God is God's denominationalism, there's no salvation in it, and that we've been Gnostics teaching things we didn't know anything about, what are we going to do? When we're poor in spirit, what are we going to do? Peter said to them, repent. Repent you and be immersed. The Greek word is baptizo. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What's the gift of the Holy Spirit? It's the gift of the Bible. What's the gift of the Bible? Salvation. The Bible from God. That's the gift. The gift would be given up by men in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10 in 340 AD. For to you is the promise and to your children. You know, those of we were called before the foundation of the world, those of us who would be Christians. And that promise wasn't to everybody. It's just those who God chose, those who he placed in this particular time. See, he puts us all in the best time for everybody as far as humanity is concerned. Our time is to be a part of the Christianity as it reboots. For to use the promise to your children to all that are far off, geographically speaking, for them, even as many as the Lord our God shall call unto him. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation, from denominationalism, Gnosticism, the matrix, the dark ages they were under. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8 talks about the ignorance of rulers, the denominational rulers of the Jews and the Gnostic rulers among the Romans that crucified Christ. They couldn't have crucified Christ except they'd been in ignorance. They then that received his word were immersed and there were added to them in that day about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all according as any man that had need. And day by day, continuing steadfastly with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread at home, they took their food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the assembly day by day those who would be saved because they obeyed the one faith system from God. They had the spirit. They had the perfect law of liberty that saved them from their sins and from every wind of doctrine of men. Acts chapter 3. Now Peter and John were going up into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, 3 p.m. And a certain man that was lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the door of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked to receive alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have that give I to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. 
And leaping up, he stood and began to walk. And he entered with him to the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they took knowledge of him, that it was he that set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were all filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Now remember, Christ had promised the disciples power from above so they could combat against the evil doctrine of men. Now, we have the same kind of power. How is that? We are just now realizing, many of us, that for 1,680 years, the Lord has been able to control what we thought concerning spiritual matters. We believed that the faith systems of men could save. And why it was it important that we believe that? So that we can now see the power from God. The ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. God can control our thoughts and humanity. He molds us like clay. And now we, like these people in Acts chapter 3, we ought to have faith in the power, majesty, and glory of God Almighty. Ought to be willing to listen to the words of the Lord. And, his, and as he held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the ports that are called Solomon's, greatly wondered. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel you at this man? Or why fasten you your eyes on us, as though by our own power or godliness we had made him to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied before the face of Pilate when he had determined to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted unto you because they preferred the wisdom of men to the wisdom of God. And as he held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the ports that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered the people, you men of Israel, why marvel you at this man? Or why fasten you your eyes on us as though by our own power, our godliness, we had made him to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied before the face of Pilate when he had determined to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murder to be granted to you and killed the prince of life. Again, remember the denominational Bible was the authority behind crucifixion of Christ. It changed the meaning of the word Elohim to singular. Uh, thus, <clears throat> they claimed that Christ wasn't the son of God. So they murdered him. Again, the wisdom of men. Who God raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses, and by faith in his name has made this man strong, who you behold and know, yes, the faith which is through him, has given him the perfect health in the presence of you all. So what is faith? It's belief in Christ. It's belief in his power and his glory and his majesty. His belief in him that he's able to do what he said he would do. For example, like rule over this earth for a thousand years from heaven. That's faith. Do you, do you believe in power and majesty and glory of God? And by faith in his name has made this man strong, who you behold and know, yes, the faith which is through him has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I know that in ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers, 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8. But the things which God foreshadowed by the mouth of all the prophets, that is, Christ should suffer, he has fulfilled. Repent you, therefore, and turn again that your sins may be blotted out, that so there may come seasons of refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ who has been appointed for you, even Jesus, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things. Wherefore God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets that had been from of old. Moses indeed said, A prophet shall the Lord God raise up, unto you from among your brethren like unto me. 
To him shall you hearken in all things, whatever he shall speak unto you. So yes, every knee will bow to Christ in the kingdom of heaven. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 10, Daniel 2, 44, 1 Corinthians 15, 25, 26. Jesus will be the only prophet, mediator, and shepherd between God and man. Hebrews 13, 7. Men will no longer be tossed about by every wind of doctrine of men. In fact, we will be freed from denominationalism and every wind of doctrine of men. John 8, 32. Back to our text. And it shall be that every soul that shall not hearken to that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and them that followed after as many as have spoken, they also told of these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and them that followed after as many as have spoken, they also told of these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his servant, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Unto you first, God, having raised up his servant, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Acts chapter 4. And as they spoke unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being sore troubled because they taught the people and proclaimed in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them inward unto the next day, for it was evening. But many of them that heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass the next day that their rulers, denominational rulers and elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem. And Annas, the high priest, was there, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or in what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders, if we this day are examined concerning a good deed done to an infirmed man, by what means this man is made whole? Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who you crucified, who God raised from the dead, even in him does this man stand here before you whole. He is the stone which was least esteemed of you, the builders, which was made the head of the corner, and in none other is there salvation. For neither is there any other name under heaven that is given among men wherein we must be saved. It takes the faith system from God for salvation. It takes the Bible from God for salvation. To our text. Now when they beheld the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man that was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle has been wrought through them, is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and charged them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name or the authority of Jesus. You can teach in any other person's authority's name, but not Jesus. You see, Christ claimed to have all authority. Because he made that claim, the world murdered him. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it is right in the sight of God to hearken unto you, to men, rather than to God, judge you. This, my friends, is the spiritual battle over good and evil. It's between God and me. To our text, for we cannot but speak the things which we saw and heard. And they, when they had further threatened them, let them go. 
finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was more than 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was wrought. And being let go, they came to their own company and reported all that the Gnostic chief priests and the elders had said unto them. And they, when they heard it, lifted up their voice to God in one accord and said, O Lord, you that did make the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the Holy Spirit, by the mouth of our father David, your servants, did say, why did the Gentiles rage? And the people imagine vain things. The kings of the earth did set themselves in array, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For of a truth in the city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you did anoint, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, were gathered together. You see, all who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Why? Because the world doesn't want to hear that Christ has all authority. The world doesn't want to hear Jesus claiming all authority. Because then men don't have a right to preach any longer. John 11, verse 48. For of a truth in the city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you did anoint, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your counsel foreordained to come to pass. And now, Lord, look upon their threatenings and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, finished praying, the place was shaken wherein they were gathered together. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God, not denominationalism, not the Bibles of men. The Bible from God is as high as the heavens above the Bibles of men. Consider also Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Truth from God is exceeding abundantly above anything we could have ever asked for or thought or hoped or imagined. But they spoke the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were one heart and soul. And not one of them said that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles their witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. For neither was there among them any that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto each according as anyone had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which has been interpreted son of exhortation, a Levite, a man Cyprus by race, having a field, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Acts chapter 5. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your power? How is it that you have conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied unto men, but unto God. Okay, so we are in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the first century, getting the church ready for the first age of the kingdom of heaven. The Holy Spirit would be speaking through Peter here in this context. And when they lied to Peter, that Peter, they were lying to the Holy Spirit. Lying to the Holy Spirit is a serious matter. When you contradict the Bible and, and try to hide portions of the Bible or deceive biblical truth, 
you're talking about blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Again, we didn't have to concern ourselves with that when we have with Bibles of men, because uh, God gave us a strong delusion and he doesn't hold us accountable for certain sins during the times of ignorance, Acts 17 and verse 30. However, now that we have the perfect law of liberty or we're restoring the perfect law of liberty, if you uh, teach something contrary to it, that's going to be blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And you don't want to sin against the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's our hope... <laughs> It's our hope of salvation. If you go against your hope of salvation, you got nothing left. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell and gave up the ghost. And great fear came upon all that heard it. And the young men arose and wrapped him round, and they carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. But Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to try the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them that have buried your husband are at the door, and they shall carry you out. And she fell down immediately at his feet and gave up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon all that heard these things. Well, didn't they deserve a nice funeral? No, they wouldn't have helped them. Of course, here we find out when we have the Bible from God that's going against men's doctrine, you're going to find out the Holy Spirit wins. This, I, this may be considered spiritual warfare against even some in the church who are trying to fight against Holy Spirit. And they lost. Serious matters in spirit, Christian spiritual warfare. You better be careful. You might call this, you know, friendly fire, so to speak. They were fighting against the Holy Spirit. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. But of the rest durst no man join himself to them. No Christian dared sin against the Holy Spirit. They learned about friendly fire. They learned you don't lie to the Holy Spirit. You don't dare try to stand up against God. Howbeit the people magnified them, and believers were more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of them and women, insomuch that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that as Peter came by, at the least his shadow might overshadow some one of them. And there also came together the multitudes from the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. But the Gnostic high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, oh, a heresy, a denomination. But the Gnostic high priest, is going to be a denominational Gnostic high priest, rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect, the Greek word is heresy of the Sadducees. And they were filled with jealousy. Again, they were kicking against the gold by their use of denominational Bible. The Septuagint had apocryphal books, and that's who the Catholic Church copied with their denominational Bible. And so realize that, again, the Septuagint, changed the meaning of the word Elohim so that Christ could not be identified as God. That was their authority behind the crucifixion of Christ. It was a subjective truth of men versus the wisdom of God. That's why men, that's how they were able to crucify Christ in their ignorance. They didn't know he's the son of God because they changed their Bible. And they were filled with jealousy and laid hands on the apostles and put them in public war. But the messenger of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go you and stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered into the temple about daybreak and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison house to have them brought. 
But the officers that came found them not in the prison. And they returned and told, saying, the prison house we found shut with all safety and the keeper standing at the door. But when we, when we had opened, we found no man within. Now, when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were much perplexed concerning them whereinto this would grow. And there came one and told them, Behold, the men whom you put in the prison are in the temple standing and teaching the people. Okay, miracles, proving that they had the authority of God, proving that the words of God were being spoken. Again, what's our proof? The fact that the Lord, the master, has clay in his hands. He has kept us from understanding truth. For 1,680 years, God has kept us from being able to distinguish between the objective truth from God and the subjective truth of men. A simple matter like Adam and Eve in the garden. When Eve said that fruit looked good to eat, that was subjective truth. And for 6,000 years of humanity, men have been under subjective truth of men. We haven't been able to understand the difference between the objective truth of God and the subjective truth of men. He's that much in control over mankind, all men, for 1,680 years. Isn't that prove enough for you? The power, majesty, and glory of the Lord God Almighty, does that not give you faith that he's able to rule over this earth? For the second age of the kingdom of heaven for a thousand years total. Then went the captain with officers and brought them, but without violence, for they feared the people that they should be stoned. And when they brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked, and the high priest asked them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in his in this name, and behold, you have Fill Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered and said, We must obey God rather than men. That's spiritual warfare. No man knows the mind of God. Denominationalism, we stood between God and man. Because we were in our ignorance. And we were being taught a lesson that we need a perfect Savior. No man knows the mind of God. Let God be true and every man a liar. Romans 3 verse 4. Remember Isaiah 55. For the ways of God, the Bible from God is as high as the heavens above the ways of men. Truth from God is exceeding abundantly above anything we ever ask or thought it could be. Ephesians 3. And verse 20, we must obey God rather than me. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew, hanging him on a tree. Him did God exalt with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and remission of sins. And we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit who God has given to them that obey him. But they, when they heard this, were cut in their heart and minded to slay them. But there stood up one in the council, a Pharisee, again a denomination, the heres of the heresy of the Pharisees, denominationalists, a Gnostic, just like we are, we're still trying to come out of these things, named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law had in honor of all the people and commanded to put the men forth a little while. And he said to them, you men of Israel, take heed to yourselves as touching these men, what you're about to do. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, giving himself out to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who were slain and all as many as obeyed him were dispersed and came to naught. After this man rose up, Judas of Galilee, in the days of the enrollment, and drew away some of the people after him, he also perished. And all as many as obeyed him were scattered abroad. And now I say unto you, 
refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. Less happily, you be found even to be fighting against God. I suppose the man had a little bit of wisdom from God in that response. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles unto them, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Oh, we're going to win in spiritual warfare. We don't have any miracles. Oh, we've got a great sign that God has been hiding his face from humanity for 1,680 years. They therefore departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus as the Christ in opposition to denominationalism, who said he was not God. Acts chapter 6. Now this chapter is, is broken up. Most of what you think of as in chapter 6 in denominational Bibles is, is going to be found in chapter 7. More Chapter 7 is going to be about Stephen. Here we're going to read about about how that God appoints those who serve him. Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a murmuring of the Grecian Jews against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. And the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not fit that we should forsake the word of God and serve tables. Look you out, therefore, brethren, from among you seven men of good report, full of the spirit and of wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. But we will continue steadfastly in prayer and in the ministry of the word, and the same please the whole multitude. And they, the Holy Spirit through them, chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands upon them. Again, the Holy Spirit was with the early church. So he decided who these deacons were, just as he would decide who preachers and elders are in Christianity. Now again, We've been in denominationalism, and we didn't know who God wanted to be leaders. Of course, you know, we didn't have the Bible, and, and we didn't have the church anyway. But we didn't know who God would want. We, we couldn't know that. Again, proof, again, we need a perfect Bible. Proof, again, we need God's Word because God is going to choose those who are our leaders in Christianity by the qualifications he gives. And we are going to be able to understand perfect law of liberty. It's not going to have the confusing doctrine of men messing things up for us. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem exceedingly. And a great company of the Gnostic priests were obedient to the faith. So you notice here how the church was growing. We think the church is going to grow from a mustard seed into a great plant over this world. You think there's going to be billions of Christians? I think there probably are going to be because the doctrine of God, the faith system from God is exceeding abundantly above what we could come up with the ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. His faith system is going to work. His word is not going to come back void. Denominational Bibles are going to come back empty because they're the words of men. They have the doctrine of men in them. And they're not the Bible. Remember Galatians 1, 6 through 8? They're talking about the Septuagint there. You have another gospel, but it's not the gospel because it has the words of men in it. You know, you add just one doctrine of men in the Bible from God, and it's not the Bible anymore. You might have a lot of good stuff in it. Denominational Bibles have a lot of good, important stuff in them. 
but you have words of men there that just mess everything up. 